In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello, and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. Hello. What was that up for? You, you, were, you were doing your BBC presenter thing. That's because you don't, I don't know what to do because you laugh at me whatever I do. Um, <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, all right. Thank you. Good, good. Um, yeah, we are... I, I, I feel a bit like we haven't done this for ages. Is it ages since we've done a podcast? It's, it's pretty much a week. I think it's a week and a bit because we were going to do it on Thursday, but then we were away on Thursday because I we did was... it on Burns night because we had all those complaints about you doing the horrible Scottish accent. We had no complaints about me doing a horrible <laughs> Scottish accent at all. We should have done. Um, Your listeners are not pulling your weight. Well, um, anyway, but yes, we were. It's now Monday that we're recording, and we we're supposed to record on Thursday, uh, but we were down in Windsor. We were being down in Windsor. Oh, Jesus, that was quite grown up, wasn't it? Yeah, sorting out our wills, <laughs> which is amusing. It's like, I don't know, you can have it. Yes, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. So we did that, and we were down in Windsor also, well, we were, we were doing our wills because we were down there, because I had been invited to speak at uh, my friend and client Michelle's Grow Your Dental Business Fast event, which is the only one of its kind in the entire universe. It's a really nice couple of days. It was great. I enjoyed wasn't it? it. Yeah. And the hotel was amazing. Amazing hotel, good speakers. Yeah. Excellent people who wanted to sort out their businesses. Yeah. Really, really good fun. It was really good fun. Um, and Michelle runs Taladium UK. Mm. So if you're in the dental business or you're a dentist, then you need to check her out because she's awesome at helping dental businesses grow their business. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's really cool. Uh, but this week, we're back. Um, and we are going to be talking about, we're following on from last week when we were, you know, talking about... Rumbling. We weren't rumbling. We were talking about why it's scary to stand out. Oh, yes, yes. And why evolution has wired us so that, that we don't do it. It's, keep, it's keep difficult. Keep your head down and stay in the herd. Yeah. Um, but this week, we're moving on from that and kind of talking about how you can overcome the fear of basically being pointed and laughed at. Okay. Well, you must have got over that by now. You'd think, but not entirely. <laughs> really? But there's so much of it. What point? You're so mean to me. You're so mean to me. Um, so yeah, this podcast is entitled Five Ways Your Faulty Thinking is Nobbling You. Blimey. Yeah. That sounds sounds like a sounds like one of those clickbaity things on Facebook. Well, it's not clickbaity because I'm actually gonna we're, well, we are actually gonna talk about five ways your faulty thinking is nobbling you. Okay. And what happened next will amaze you. And what happened next will amaze you. Yes, exactly. You won't believe. You won't believe what happened after you discovered five ways your faulty thinking nobbled you. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, what are we drinking? I've, I, we're not drinking what I've got down in the notes because I got back from um, my poll class and didn't feel like drinking gin. So I'm drinking water, excitingly. That is pretty I'm exciting. really thirsty. What are you I, drinking? I've got, I've, I've got Ribena. <laughs> It's, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. I feel like we, we drank quite a lot at the weekend. We did drink quite a lot. It was quite a boozy. Quite a boozy, quite a boozy time. Event. Mm. So, uh, but on the next podcast, we will be drinking the lovely gin that our lovely neighbour Barbara gave us. The Barbaratron. Barbaratron. So we will come back to that. Anyway, last week we were fighting 3.8 billion years of evolution. Yes. And this week we Saber are... Sabretooth bears. Sabretooth bears. And this week we're going to talk about how to beat your fear of looking daft. Basically. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, pff, I'm so, going to start by quoting my friend and client, Vicky La Bouche. Vicky La Bouche. Vicky La Bouchardier, who was also a presenter at the weekend with her partner, Kevin, and they are lovely people. Um, she's a life coach, but do not hold that against her. She is the best possible kind of life coach. One who actually does something and sorts it out. Yeah, she's got like a counselling background and is a really smart cookie mm. and is really kind and really funny and we basically shriek with laughter every time we get together which is always good fun 
So, yeah, but I'm going I'm to quote her. And she said um, in her book, which is called How to Live with a Dickhead, <laughs> which is a great book. And it's really funny because you're kind of like, oh, I don't, I, that's basically saying that all men are dickheads. And it's like, no, no, you read the book and you realise that actually you're the dickhead. It's like How to Live with Yourself, Who is a Dickhead. Oh. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a very good book. And I, I highly recommend it. Uh, but she says in that book, your mind is so powerful, your thoughts will make or break you and you are free to think as you want, whenever you want. Which is true. And I think we sometimes forget that, don't we? Yes. So we sometimes forget that we're fully in control of our own thoughts. This is... Yeah. People, people I've, I've got to admit, it's, it's, it's not really something that bothers me because I oscillate between just like goldfish... <laughs> which I'm pretty good at. I can just do goldfish for quite a long time. And, um, yeah, just just doing things. Because I have... There's not an awful lot of sentience going on in my head, <laughs> I to don't be perfectly think honest. That, I don't think that's true at all. I have too many thoughts, or always too many thoughts. Um, but it kind of comes back to that whole, you, you know, you might not always be able to control what happens to you, but you can always control how you react to it. Mm-hmm. And I think people forget that as well. So, you, you know, you see people who kind of make a career out of being a victim. Yes. And it's like, why would, why would you want to live your life with that little power? Mm, where everything just happens to you and then it knocks you, every, everything knocks you off course and everything affects you. And Yeah. And it's, yes. it's kind of okay to be knocked for six for a little while, but you can't live your life like that. It's, you know, it's, it has, there has yeah. to be a point where it's... I mean, there's, there's an amazing book by Viktor Frankl. And I forget the name of the book because I'm a terrible person. But he was a Holocaust survivor. And he said, and I'm really paraphrasing badly here because I, it, it's the, the idea that stuck with me and not, not, kind the, of words. The, not the words in the crowd. I've got the book and it's in my list of books to read. Um, but he talked about how even when he was in a concentration camp, he still they still could never take away from him that, that independence of thought. Mm-hmm. You know, he always, he had no control over what was happening to him in that concentration camp, but they had no control over how he thought and what, you know, mm. how he reacted to what happened to him. And I just thought, wow, that's such an incredible message to mm-hmm. kind of put out into the world. Um, and, you know, if, if he can, if he can hold on to his sense of self through, I can't even imagine what kind of hell, then the rest of us can fucking, you know, get on with it, really, yeah, just- frankly. <laughs> um but just saying get on with it is not a helpful thing. So that that's why in this podcast I wanted to go through five kind of, you know, thinking errors. Okay. Really. And and help people help people kind of take control of their own thoughts. All right. So So we're gonna start with all or nothing thinking. And okay. I'm sure everybody is gonna recognise some of this. You know, everybody who's listening is gonna recognise bits and pieces of this stuff. They you know, we we all do this kind of thing all the time. Um but all or nothing thinking. Do you know what I mean by all or nothing thinking? I think I do. Go on. What do you think? I'm basically thirsty. And I want to have a drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, it's 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 when it's when you perceive the world in a binary fashion, and you everything's either great or disastrous, uh, perfect or terrible, and there's no kind of grey area in between that allows you to think. Well, that could have gone a little bit better, but you know, we all survived. Exactly. That is exactly what all or nothing thinking is. So everything is either amazing or terrible. Amazing or terrible. Amazing or terrible. So when we do something, well, it's the best thing ever. It's awesome and it's really good fun. And when we do something that perhaps is not so good or someone laughs at us, it's not just that one little thing that's bad. Everything Mm. surrounding it immediately becomes crap. Okay. And so it might be that, you know, it might be that you've had a really, I don't know, it might be that you've had a really good talk is you've given a really good present presentation from my point of view it's like really good presentation and then you know you get loads of praise and loads of praise and then one person says um says oh you know it would have been really great if you'd just done this at the end mm. and suddenly immediately the whole thing's crap whole thing's shit. and it's like of course it's it's not it's like okay that's a, an area that i could improve in mm. <laughs> doesn't mean that the whole thing's it's assuming crap. it's a valid comment assuming I mean, it's a valid yeah. comment yeah and we'll, we'll come to that in a little while because yeah, i've okay. got a little easter egg hidden at the end Okay. I'm obsessed with Easter eggs at the moment. That's because it's nearly Easter. No, I mean the the nerdy type of Easter egg. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, just watch out for your all or nothing thinking. You know, if 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 you are having a bad day or you try something and it doesn't quite go as planned, is it really a complete and total disaster? Is the world really ending, or you know, is it just that that one aspect didn't quite work out and actually it's yeah. it's not 
all terrible. You're somewhere on the spectrum and you can do better next time. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, okay, so that's that's the first thing, all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. And we all do it every now and then. I do it probably more often than not, but I recognise it now. It's kind of being aware of of your thoughts. Recognising and going, oh, hang on a minute. I'm being a douchebag. Being a douchebag here. <laughs> so, um, so number two, number two is mind reading. I don't know about you, Joe, but I am an expert mind reader. No, it's goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not goldfish. It's not an attractive trait. <laughs> it's simple. What, what, what do you mean by mind reader? Okay, so um, I already know that people are going to hate this podcast. Okay. I know that. They're going to hate it. I already know that because I'm an expert, telepathically gifted mind reader. Okay. Um, I know that you are narrowing your eyes at me because you are thinking, oh my God, she looks like such a twat with her hair and her Gary Boosie crossed with Boo Radley style. You're not thinking that at all, are you? No. No, of course you're not. <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm talking about. That's that's mind reading. It's It's, you know, it's deciding that you know what's in somebody's head. Yeah, all right, okay. And, and, and generally not to the good. No, almost never to the good. Although I think that I think there's a little bit of a gender split here because I suspect quite often if men catch women looking at them, they're like, oh, she's looking at me, she's looking at me. And it's like quite often, most of the time I would say, no, nah, we're really not. We're either looking at something behind you or there's goldfish. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think... I'm probably maybe I'm maybe I'm being horribly sexist here. I'm going to get letters, uh, but p- particularly women, I think, are very good at mind reading, and mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like oh she's you know there's a, c- a couple of couple of other women over in the corner and they're they're kind of whispering and giggling. Of course, they're going to be talking about me and they're going to be laughing at me. It's like that's, that, they're not <laughs> almost certainly not, and you know that that kind of goes for. But it 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 also it it comes it can sometimes come before the. Th- thing that you are being read for isn't it because yeah. it, it's it's not like i've given this presentation and i'm going to assume that i think you know everybody thinks it's shit it's it's even before then you start going well if i give a presentation everyone's going to think it's shit therefore i won't give a presentation yeah so or, you 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 it actually it, it doesn't just hurt you after the event it kind of prevents you doing it in the first place yeah it does Hmm. And it, it, and that's when it gets that's when it gets ridiculous because it's it, you, that's when you start talking yourself out of doing the things that are a little bit scary. Yeah, because other people will think badly of you, or nobody will like it, or nobody will buy it, or they yeah. all think we're ridiculous. Or yeah, or you know that when you go out and you it, you know it's personal stuff as well. It's like when you go out in your new trousers and you're like, oh, they're all going to think I look like a chimney sweep, which apparently they do. Um, so <laughs> <and> it's like <laughs> how how many times have you decided that you know what's in somebody's head? It's you know it's. It's not that at all. What actually is happening is your insecurities are crawling out of their pit and pouring out of your face mm. in a litany of ridiculous, you know, nonsense, really. Do you ever decide you know what people are thinking? No, I quite often decide what they should think. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> OK, then. So, um, so yeah, just, just keep an eye on... The mind reading thing. You are not a mind reader, dear listener. You do not know what is in somebody's head. Yeah. And most, if... most of the time, everybody else is just dealing with their own shit and getting on with it. Yeah, they really They're are. They're not, not even considering you. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I'm just wondering if that's um, a little bit further down. It is, and we're going to come to that. Oh, man. We're going to come to that later. You've just ruined the entire podcast, Joe. Like, Jesus. all or nothing thinking, you've ruined the entire podcast. whole podcast is fucked. Let's whole start podcast. again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I thought that's a perfect it's living live demonstration. Of, it's like it's a plan. I know. I know. We are. It's too clever for really us. We, could, we couldn't this. have planned that. Wait. What? Well, you couldn't. You couldn't have planned it. Um, okay. So number three, uh, the third faulty thinking error, is catastrophizing. This is a good one. I'm really good at this. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at this. Um, shall I tell my story about? Okay. Yeah. About how our lives were ruined. Within the space of six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. So, um, you had just come back from jujitsu. Right. This is like not long after you started doing it, so this is still at the stage where you were throwing up on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> we got. I've got over that now. It's fine. Mostly. Um, but Mostly. <laughs> so ju- Brazilian jujitsu is basically a martial art in which a really large sweaty man sits on your face and tries to twist your arms off. It's it's kind of like aggressive uh, yoga. 
It's but, not like so, aggressive yoga at all. It is. Other people try and put you in positions you don't like. Right. Anyway, <laughs> it's grim. And um, so Joe had had a particularly grim session at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like grim enough for him to say, please, could you drive home? Because <laughs> uh, I, I do poll at the same that, time. That, as... that was, please, could you drive home in case in case that wasn't. Yeah, but I was doing it in your voice at the time, which was quite whimpery. Well, I wasn't. I said, I I don't feel very well. I think you should drive. That's not how it came out at all. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I drove home and Joe had a shower and I was like, go sit on the sofa and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make dinner and and all the rest of it, which is quite rare. Very, very rare. (laughs) Um, And so you went and sat on the sofa and I was, I was in the kitchen. I was like, I was a little bit worried because you really didn't look very well. (laughs) And so I was kind of in the kitchen doing my thing and you were sitting on the sofa and I, I heard this groaning noise <laughs> and I was like, and this, bear in mind, this next sequence took place over the space of about six seconds. And I was like, what was that noise? Oh my God, he's had a stroke. He's had a stroke. Shit, how am I going to, if I call an ambulance, I won't get here in time. We live in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's going to have brain damage. He's going to have brain damage. He's going to have brain damage and he's not going to be able to look after himself. I'm going to have to give up everything. He's going to lose his job. I'm going to have to give up everything to care for him. And he's I've lost my Joe. I've lost my Joe. And what are we going to do about the house? Oh, oh my God, what's going to happen to the cats? At the point where he legged it into the other room and was like, oh my God, are you okay? And you're like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> do you remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, um, yeah, pretty impressed with myself. Anyway, so that's, that's catastrophizing. <laughs> And I'm very good at it. Hmm. Are you good at it? Do you, ever, no. do you ever worry that I'm dead in a ditch? No. Really? So you don't give a shit about me? <laughs> no, of course I give a shit. I, just in my experience, you're not very frequently dead in a ditch. <laughs> but that's the whole point of catastrophizing. It's like, well, it doesn't, not. It it's doesn't, all the same to you. <laughs> no, 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 that's, very, that's very healthy. But I bet there are people listening to this who are like, I totally do that. Maybe not quite as lunatic as, as I just described then, which was an actual thought process well, of mine. Pretty loopy. But yeah, it's it's that kind of, you know, if if, if a customer cancels on you, it's like, oh, well, my whole business is now <laughs> destroyed. It's like, it's, I might as well just wrap it all up. And I still do this. You know, if, mm. if, if somebody cancels a retainer or, you know, somebody leaves the inner circle or whatever for 30 seconds or so, I'll be like, I don't know why I'm doing this. The whole thing is pointless. I might as well give it all up <laughs> just and go, go and work get, in Sainsbury's. Go and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's perfect. I, kind of the part of the reason I wanted to do this for this podcast is because this stuff is normal. Like these thoughts make you, they do make you feel like you are going insane because they are utterly irrational. But they are so normal because like I, when I was talking to Vicky about this stuff, she was like, yeah, people, it's just how our brains work. And I was like, oh, thank God for that. Joe's looking at me now with a really blank face like, that's not how my brain works. <laughs> Good just, for you. You sit not. and bask in your smugness. <laughs> I, it just feels sounds really dull in my head. Sounds quite exciting in yours. <laughs> it's, the, it's not the right kind of exciting, though. It's the kind of stress, stressful exciting where my blood pressure goes up and my arteries harden and I'm going to die of a heart attack before I'm 40. You see how this works? <laughs> anyway, catastrophizing. Okay. So, yeah, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, or, you know, if you are doing it, then recognise that it's probably not reflecting reality. Jesus. <laughs> uh, what if thinking, this is a good one as well. Okay. You're going to know, you're so going to know people who do this. Have you ever met a chronic what if Joan? I think I work with a couple. Okay. So um, you will know if you have, by the way, listener, because they'll probably have driven you around the bend. Uh, so, you know, imagine, let's say you're planning a holiday with friends and this is how the conversation goes. What if we miss the flight? Well, we'll make sure that we get to the airport six hours ahead and uh, sit in one of those swanky lounges. Okay. Okay, but what if the plane crashes? Well, you know, it almost certainly won't, but here are some statistics, um, and I'm not getting a boat because it'll take weeks. It's like, okay. What if we hate the hotel? Well, you know what? We'll be spending most of our time kind of out having fun anyway in it. Do we just need to sleep in it? Mm. <laughs> What if, uh, at which point, you press the button that destroys the universe? Because, you know, it's just, have you, you know, have you met people like that? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, 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 shudder to say too much, but uh, when, when, when the, some people I work with uh, will take a very small amount of information, go with it, and then do some work. 
and other people won't feel anything like comfortable until they know absolutely every piece of information that there is on the whole universe to do with this topic. And they are very much the what if this, what if that, what if the other, how, how, how does this work? How do I work? How do I get through it? And they just, it's, I think it's a bit of a lack of confidence thing. Yeah, it is. And, you know, a little bit of what I think is, is sensible because you do what you want to have yeah. contingencies. And, but, you know, getting to the point of what if the plane crashes is, it's like, well, really, there is nothing you can do about that. So it's like, let's yes. not, let's not think about it. Either choose not to do anything or, Ignore that one. Yeah. But yeah, just just kind of watch the what if, the what if thing. And when that comes to business, it's like, you know, if you're going to be doing something that's out of your comfort zone and scary, rather than going, what if everyone hates me? Because that's a really unhelpful hmm. what if. You can think, oh, you know, what if the technology breaks? What if I set fire to a projector, which I have in fact done before? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's valid. It's like, well, okay, if I set fire to a projector, I'm just going to make sure I've got props. Mm-hmm. Or, or we'll move to the flip chart. We'll move to the flip chart. Yeah. But, you know, the, the what if everyone hates my presentation is deeply unhelpful. Because mm. they won't. You know, mm-hmm. you'd have to do, yeah, you have to be quite bad. So, so okay, so that's what if thinking. So if you catch yourself what ifing a lot, then just make sure it's sensible what ifs and not mm. ridiculous, unhelpful what ifs. If it's not more than, well, if, it, if it's not between zero and 30% likely, don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> And finally, um, the one that we should have put a spoiler alert on earlier, personalization. Okay. So when you personalize everything, take everything really deeply personally. Sure. So when I first started sending daily emails, it was pretty scary. Yes. And, I, you know, I only had you and my mom on the list to start with, but even so, it's like you're putting yourself out there and your personality out there and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit scary. But my list grew. My scaredyness grew. Yes. Carried on doing it anyway. And then one day, an email landed in my inbox that said, and I quote, and I apologise for the swearing, fuck off and die. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and now it would make me laugh. <laughs> Back then, it made me cry because, you know, this is the first time I'd had that level of vitriol directed at me. And it was quite a, it was quite an innocuous email. Was that all it said? Yeah, that was all it said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, there was no preamble. No preamble. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> And I was just like, but I was really upset at the time because I was like, how could somebody who's never met me hate me so much they wanted me to die? (laughs) And the answer to that is, of course they didn't hate me and they didn't want me to die. Of course they didn't. And, you know, what had probably happened was that he'd stubbed his toe or something and then then he'd literally just opened my email and he was like, what's this crazy bitch talking about? And it was like, that's where, you know. I mean, just, just earlier today, as I got out of my car... It gave me a horrible static shock and I had a proper Basil, Basil Faulty moment as I kicked it really hard. <laughs> it's just like, mother, you know. <laughs> it's like an inanimate, an inanimate object and it wasn't malicious. But I kicked the car anyway because it hurt so much. And it's, it's that kind of reaction. So it, it, does that make sense, that kind of personalisation thing? Yeah. 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 So if, if somebody snaps at you, it's like when somebody gives you a dirty look... Are they really giving you a dirty look, or have they got wind? Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's it's more than that as well. Because I mean, somebody might somebody might be on in, in your in your inner circle for a year. They might learn all kinds of things off you from you. They might choose to take their business in a different direction. They might decide that they they get a better you know they they need to invest their money in business systems or I don't know what the hell you know something else that you don't offer. And they might make a totally sensible business decision to stop mm. giving you money and pick up a different yeah. you know object and, and go work with that and then you take it horribly personally and think they hate you yeah and it's it's funny because people don't often give you reasons for doing stuff like that and it's like it's, it's why it's quite right i had a really lovely email the other day from ivan hi who, ivan, hi, ivan who has been in my superhero since i started that's four years ago blimey and he's been there from the start and that by the way Listeners, it's almost unheard of in my industry to have somebody, you know, in a mm. membership group for that long. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm really deeply proud of that. And I had a lovely email from him um, just before the weekend saying that, you know, he's loved being part of the group and it's time to bow out because now his next challenge is getting all of his people facing in the right direction. He's got a two million turnover business. Business has grown. He's grown. And he's like, he's like, thank you so much because you've helped me do that you've helped me take it from like a one million quid business to a two million quid business and mm-hmm. that just makes me feel just awesome yeah. uh, but then his next problem is something that I can't help him with because I don't know really that much about 
getting employees all yeah, facing teams the same of people and, and yeah and so i feel awesome about that because it's like i have like set him free to go off and do the next thing and yeah. you know so that's great and if people give you reasons like that then that's amazing it's but beautiful. if they don't give you reasons don't assume that it's because you're not doing a good job it's yeah. you know it's more more often than not just time for a change or you know it's nothing to do with you so don't personalize things don't personalize things unless somebody actually says you shit and i hate you you're almost certainly not. <laughs> Even then. They've, Even then it's... stubbed their toe. When yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that's um, that's the that's the five, the five, well, five of the ways. There are many more ways that your, mm. your faulty thinking will nobble you, but that's the five that we've chosen to talk about today. Um, or well, just, Joe, could you just quickly recap them? Okay, so there's um, number one, all or nothing thinking, binarizing. Binarizing, is that a word? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, all, all responses go from brilliant to terrible with nothing in between. Yep. So just you know, just don't do that. Look at the look at the shades a, a of way that there is a spread. Yeah. Um, second one, mind reading, assuming that you know what other people are thinking even before they've witnessed the thing that you're about to show them. Yeah. Assuming that your audience is going to hate you. Assuming that they're all going to not like it. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, catastrophizing um, is the third one. This is where you assume. Um, no, you just create a you situation. You just create a situation, yeah. Everything's everything's a disaster. You go you go from, you know, a minor setback to the whole planet's on fire. Yeah. Very quickly. Um four is what if thinking? Uh where you just spend an awful lot of time thinking about the consequences of absolutely everything that could possibly ever happen to such an extent that you never actually achieve yeah. anything or do anything because God knows there's seven thousand things you can think of that might possibly go wrong. <laughs> Um, uh, number five, and the last one, would be personalization, where it's all about you, mm. and it's never about them. Um, so you assume that somebody making a good business decision for themselves, actually, it's it's because you're shit. Yeah. Um, or somebody choosing not to buy your thing, or somebody taking your quote and going, gosh, that's a bit expensive, that's not for me. And you know what? This works the other way as well. It's almost never that if somebody has something good happened to them that you can then say oh I helped do that it's like you know it never works right that yeah. way around you know it's always if something it's bad always happens bad it's like oh that's all down to me and I'm a terrible person totally fuck that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny how that works yeah. but with that last one actually I just wanted to very quickly give my top tip you know with the personalization thing mm -hmm. if you get a negative comment from sort of if I get a negative comment from somebody I have two post-it notes you know the little ones that Mm -hmm. two inch square ones um, and I have names written on them one of them is personal one of them is business uh -huh. and I have the names of people whose opinions genuinely matter to me okay. there are some there's some crossover but there are different names on on each post-it note if somebody says something negative to me and their name is not on one of those post-it notes or on, not on the relevant post-it note I can dismiss it out of hand because they're why do I care what this mm -hmm. person who isn't important to me thinks of me so that's that's my top tip for today is is do the same thing you know think about the people in business who really deserve to have an opinion mm -hmm. about your business and who are qualified to have an opinion about your business put those names on one post-it note and on the personal post-it note put the names of people whose opinions genuinely matter to you you know whose good opinion of you genuinely matters so I've got a few people who if they said something negative to me I'd be like oh you know what I really do need to work on that behavior or you know I, yeah, I need I'll to look a, at I'll why a bit of an assessment about that have a word with myself yeah mm -hmm. So that's I think is a really important thing because otherwise we just take everything to heart and you can't you can't live your life like that because it's it's mm -hmm. not sustainable. Cool. So, so our takeaway today is to really pay attention to what you're thinking about and how you react to things. Is it healthy or rational? Or are you being a crazy lunatic? And you know, what I find quite helpful is to write down the thoughts and feelings that come into my head and look at them on paper and then like, oh that's that's the ramblings of a crazy person. Put that is, on the fire. Put that on the fire, yeah. So so I hope this has been helpful, and I'm going to get um, Vicky Labouche on the podcast soon Excellent. over at G&T, and we're going to talk all about mindset and really get digging deeper to this because she's the expert. This is just stuff, a lot of this stuff I picked up from my cognitive behavioural therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's kind of been ingrained in me. It's been really, really, really helpful to, you know, de-lunaticking myself. Um, but this is a good start. We'll get Vicky on the podcast and talk to her about it because it's, it's going to be great. Um, next week, we're talking about what makes you so special. And it's not what you're thinking. All that. All that. So you better tune in and find out. Cool. Um, right, call to action. Pre-register for my brand new book, which is coming out in April. Blimey. I know! Go to vickyfraser.com forward slash flamingo. 
give me your name and your email address and I will let you know as soon as you can order it. If you are one of the first few, you will get a limited edition hardcover. Ooh. I know. I haven't decided what yet. You'll get some goodies. Um, you can also join Bookaholics Anonymous, my free book club. And you can go to vickyfraser.com forward slash book club and find out all about that. You can join my superheroes crew and actually start getting stuff done and doing things differently. And I will help you build up the courage to do things a little bit differently. And cool. we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, go to businessforsuperheroes.com forward slash inner hyphen circle. And finally, if you like this podcast, please go to iTunes and subscribe. It helps us climb the rankings or, you know, just rate us. Reviewers. Or recommend us. Recommend us, yeah. Send, send people to vickyfraser.com forward slash podcast. Groovy. I'd love to have new listeners. Thank you very much, Joe. Oh, I also wanted to say thank you. Um, Unsung Heroes, I wanted to do this because okay. I don't thank enough people. Um, the Podfly guys, but particularly, I believe it's Crunch who does our show notes. Hey, thanks, yeah. Crunch. Thanks, Crunch. And we will uh, we'll be back same time next week. And yeah, have fun. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast. 